Hi. Welcome to the Drawing Solo Podcast. My name is Mason McKinney, and I'm with... Turandon. Q-E-L-I-N-D-N-T. I I promise you that way because I'm actually from France, but I think you could tell that from my accent. Nice. And if you want to learn how to get inspiration from anywhere, subscribe to my newsletter and receive a PDF. They'll show you how to do so. So, so, say your name one more time. uh, I'm sorry. (laughs) Say your name one more time. So, so slowly for uh, the English speakers in the back. All right. <laughs> que, que la, no. Que la, no. Nice. Yeah. What that does that mean? Is it, is it a name that you uh, came up with? Or does it mean something? Well, well it's just stupid uh, world game type thing, which, which is just like delinquent. You change the two, two letters. And it gives that Canadian or Canadian, as you would say. Sick. But it's uh, uh, just a name that I have. I just don't think of much of it. All right. I like it. I like it a lot. Quillendon. So, what do you create? Cartoons. Cartoons. Online cartoons. Hmm. Why do you create cartoons? For fun. For fun. All right, nice. Uh, Can you explain the cartoons that you create in seven words? Well, all kinds, I would say. It can range from comedy or even something serious or dramatic. Uh, As my, uh, I'm open to any uh, somewhat medium or um, how can I say that? Well, any type of cartoon, honestly. Uh, I just make anything really. But it's mostly like comedy cartoons. But sometimes I can make. Uh, um, uh, can we cut that? I can make that. Um, uh, make that. Uh, answer that that question. I need to think about it anymore. Oh no, we can. We can. We're we're just going with the flow. Don't don't be nervous. It's it's all good. All right. Yeah. So. Oh. <laughs> So, what kind of cartoons have you been making recently? Well, um, mostly comedy cartoons, just fun stuff, you know, something that you come home and sit down and just watch for fun and not um, use your brain while watching it. It's fun cartoons, basically. I mean, yeah, that's it. Oh, what inspired you to make cartoons for fun? Well, mostly first off, it built from a passion of uh, wanting to draw. I've always been drawing since I was very young. And uh, all the way through, I started to make comics. And one day, through the internet, I found out that people could make their own cartoon by, uh, from home by themselves. Thanks to YouTube and Newgrounds also. And that was in 2012. and. It was until 2013 that I found uh, uh, that I found a way to make it myself through an animation program called the Micromedia Flash, and ever since then I still use it. Micromedia Flash? How old is that program? Uh, almost two decade old. It came out in 2005. I have what? the uh, last version, Flash 8. Oh my! What 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 keeps you using that software and not moving on to like something something uh, newer? Well, it's because first of all, the software is very very easy to use and to understand, but also with the muscle memory and all, and uh, how easy it is to use with like the brush and all. It looks it um, feels and uh, just looks better than the newest one. And also, it's a more stable program compared to its, uh, well, successors. Mm, I have, like, I hear a lot about uh, the memes of Adobe products crashing, usually. And uh, it's nice to ha- hear somebody say, oh, yeah, it's a stable program. Like, but that was, like, well, way, that was way back, way back when. Well, it's... I mean, it's a running gag, of course, but Macromedia Flash isn't perfect, obviously. Mm-hmm. It does crash 
but I'm saying that it crashed less often than its successors. And uh, even so, I'm still using it regardless. I've been trying a lot to move on next ones, and I've been thinking about it, but I'm just good with the tools that I currently have, and I'm not complaining. Where do you do you uh, hope to take your animation somewhere? Uh, where do you hope to take your animations? Do you want to? Do you have larger aspirations? Do you want to work with a studio? Do you want to work collaborate with bigger names, or are you just happy with what you're doing with your uh, cartoons? Well, I'm always happy to what I'm doing because I always get new ideas every time and want to pursue that regardless how long it takes. But when it comes to collaborating and even, of course, working on TV and etc., this was a question that my opinion has changed over the years and seeing how animation looks or how it's doing on TV. Well, seeing uh, the behind the scenes and how actually animators and directors are actually treated by and how. Well, let me tell you this. If you pitch a show, it's 100% it's not going to look exactly how you pitched it. Yeah. It's good. You will get it broke, uh, broke apart. You will not, you, you may not even like it. And to me, I don't like when people touch my shit. Mm-hmm. I don't like when people tell me what I should do. Yeah, because I mean, I I keep but, uh, hearing different stories about people wanting to pitch to a network or a larger conglomerate, and since you're pitching your idea to somebody else, a lot of people, a lot of creatives don't realize when you pitch an idea to a network, you're letting go of your rights to own it, and and like that network now owns that idea if they take it on. Or if they say, yeah, this is ours now, and like we can do whatever we want with it, you can stay along because it's you're you're the you're the main guy. But if you if you are deemed problematic, we can easily replace you. I know that happened with uh, that cartoon, Clarence. You remember? Yeah, I want, also wanted to add on what I said earlier. Um, I'm very open to criticism. It is how mm-hmm. I got myself here and to uh, improve my art style. What I'm saying when I don't listen is. Well, in another, le- uh, like, well, um, context, I would say. Mm-hmm. Well, it's just people being bossy, kind of. But when it comes to other artists, I totally t- t- listen to, to them. But when it comes to people like that, well, I'm, I really prefer to say, let me do my own thing. But well, about Clarence and, and all, I was about to, also, to say uh, something with also the power of girls because Cartoon Network owns uh, the rights and the original creator isn't even behind the power of reboots. And that is an example of how you can be screwed easily. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And when it comes to other forms such as merchandise, it's your, your quote unquote, the creator of the idea, but the network they decide how it's gonna run if it does well so yeah i mean no knowing networks it's not we're not talking about like mr cartoon network or mr nickelodeon or whatever mm-hmm. it's a huge team of people and there's uh well how can i say that communication people and let's say they can take your cartoon and promote it by themselves so use their idea to promote it. So like the, the trailer, shirts and all may not go in your view. So for example, if you had your cartoon on TV, you might get some merch with them doing like the latest trend or whatsoever, the latest dance. And we've seen that, I mean, it will happen, it happens. Now the question is, I think when it comes to animal, should you work on TV and all, I'm saying, you do whatever you want. As an artist, the main thing is you're free to do whatever with your artwork. Mm. At the end of the day, you, you will get criticized, but it's your choice. Yeah. Speaking with working with a network, so it takes a whole group of people to make a cartoon. Are you part of a conglomerate or do you do everything by yourself? I do absolutely everything by myself. When it comes to 
ideas, writing scripts, animatic storyboard, animation line art, coloring, backgrounds, audio editing, even voices. It's all by me, by, uh, by me. What is your favorite part of the process and your least favorite part of the process? Uh, getting, getting it done. Okay. <laughs> I just wanted yeah. to get it done already. I, I, this is, look, one minute of animation can take me from two weeks to even two months. Yes. Depending how detailed it is and all. And I just want to be done and start a new one. It's, it, it, that, that feeling is so real. It's like, I have an idea, but why would I, but it's for, it's taking forever to make it, but it's, it's that drive. How do you stay motivated between those two weeks to two months to make minute after minute of a cartoon? Focus. Lock in. I grew up with that. And it's a passion and a motivation of a child I still have in me for a decade now. It's been exactly 10 years that I've been animating. And to this day, that passion hasn't died yet. Hopefully. But all this is just... It fascinates me still. So when I'm working on it, I'm just thinking of how the character is going to move, how, what I'm going to do next, and so on and so on. Setting myself goals and all look like, oh, okay, today I need to finish this background, do the character like this, do the lip sync, do this and this and this part. Break your cartoon in multiple parts and set it as, as a goal for yourself. And put on like some kind of levels to it, like... Okay, on easy mode, I just do this. On mid, uh, on hard mode, I'm gonna do that and also this. Yeah. So if I have enough time. Yeah. So you like prioritizing like which is more difficult, and you're just you're breaking things apart, and the easy stuff you're just knocking right out. And so when it gets to the hard part, you'll have more energy and more focus to get to get to that. Right. The thing is, when it comes to the thing is, I mean, I didn't get the question. Can you repeat that? Sorry. I was just uh, trying to like feedback what you're trying to say. It's like uh, you're breaking your work apart and tackling it uh, ad- accordingly, so you can stay focused throughout throughout the duration of the project. Is it something like that? Oh, absolutely. It's many people come to me and, and say, "Oh, I wish I could make long cartoons and." But then I can't finish it, or oh, I have too many ideas, and so on and so on. No, you're not gonna finish that. I doubt. I doubt. I doubt that you will. <laughs> See it this way. Yes. Yeah. Start with a 10 second cartoon, start with an, even a small loop animation. Nothing. It's like a fly of stairs. You, you, think, you really think you're gonna be able to take a, a huge fly of stairs when you just got started? No. Small small steps by small steps and so on and so on and when you get there you will be used to and already have the experience and that's how me i managed to make longer cartoons even so if you are afraid of your own uh what creations to finish it what well, see it's just like as almost homework like today i'm gonna finish this and tomorrow i'll finish that just like i said earlier break it down and Try to do what you can. Don't force yourself. You will burn yourself out and it will cre- kill your creativ- creativity and motivation. So be kind to yourself. Don't be harsh. And try to go easy. I mean, unless you have a deadline and all. Remember, you are, you are, um, you are an internet animator. And last thing, last thing, don't put a deadline on a cartoon you haven't finished yet. It should be finished by... 99% if you want to put a deadline, because trust me, you will not finish by that date. And I doubt it. Mm, I feel that. What's the longest cartoon have you, that you've finished? And would you make a cartoon that long and or longer? Uh, my longest cartoon is uh, called 2 a.m. p.m. Reanimated. It's a uh, reanimation of uh, G.J. Quintel's storyboard that he made when he was in college called 2 a.m. p.m. I took that and remade it myself. All by yourself? And it's seven... Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, from the beginning to the end, and it's seven minutes, seven and a half long. It took me around five months to finish it. Mm. 
Five months. Okay. By yourself. That's that's amazing. That is amazing. Like the last time I worked on an animation by myself, it was a uh, a music video for a song. I think it was called Summer's Like a Dream. And that took me an entire year to do three minutes of animation. I have no idea what it, why it took so long. But you must be super, super efficient. How many hours a day do you dedicate to animating? Well, I live in a, in a huge family, so you know how it is with siblings wanting to be on the computer first. So my hours of working are kind of reduced, but usually it is around a an hour and a half to even five or six hours or even seven hours. You I don't see time passing because I'm really focused on my work and wanted to get it done and also uh, well done. So you have a large family and you have your own and you still have five hours dedicated but to yourself to be on the computer and you don't have to share that with anybody else? Well, I do have to share it to... to uh, <laughs> what, what do you mean by sh sharing it? Like, I'm sure, like, when you live in a large family and you have a lot of siblings, they want to have their turn at the computer. Like, do yeah, you that's what I'm talking yeah. about. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, they want their turn, and they are siblings, so you know how they act. Mm hmm Okay. I remember very early in the conversation, you said that you were kind of thinking about getting into comics, but you moved onward to animation. And hearing that, that's kind of the complete opposite of how I got into comics because you may remember remember me from doing animations back in the day, but my thing was animation took too long and it took so much work to what I wanted to do. So I moved over to comics so I can tell more of the story, tell more of a story uh, and do whatever I want uh, and at a faster rate. So what made you want to move over to an animation instead of doing the jokes that you wanted to tell or doing the atmosphere or telling the stories that you wanted to tell through uh, animation over comics? Here's the thing. Um, when it comes to all of those mediums as art, let's take it from the beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, you want to tell a story. You yeah. write one. Mm -hmm. that you can make a, a book. The person who will read it will read it this way. He will imagine the characters, sound, atmosphere, and all. Now make a comic. Okay, he sees it, but he has to imagine the voices, the sounds, and everything. But now you make a cartoon. You're the one who's showing everything. You're not leaving a single bit to the viewer. You're telling, and you're telling exactly how it actually is, and it, and it gives you full props to everything. Mm hmm I get that. It sounds like the next step would be a video game. Um, that's, that's more like giving freedom to the viewer. Or yeah. You okay. do. But, um, that's more longer, and <laughs> it could fall apart, it, it could fall into a... Uh, me wanting to discover other mediums, mm -hmm. but I see that later. What other mediums would you find interest in, other than cartoons? Well, well, um, I would like to uh, look into uh, making cartoons a different way. For example, um, maybe in three D mm. or in stop motion. And if any other medium is interesting me as. Uh, as an uh, art form, or even make a game, but of course, all of all of this is our all of those are ideas that I have, and still need still need to uh, well look into. Hmm. What kind of have you ever thought about more experimental forms of animation, like VR, like animation? Well, uh, no. I never thought about that. Would it be good? Um, yeah, maybe. I don't know how it will fit uh, in, uh, as a 2D animation. Mm -hmm. 3D animation, I mean, I've seen a lot, but 2D, um, I don't know. Okay. For now, I'm, I'm just doing the stuff that I actually can do. 
All right. It was just a, it was a passing thought. It came to my mind. So, what are some of the cartoons that inspired you? What? I, I thought uh, I really suck at those questions, but um, when it comes to inspirations, I it's not cartoons. Really? It's not cartoons. I I mean, it's half on or not even half. First off, uh, when I started making comics, it's all because of uh, I saw when I was young, I saw the Amazing World of Gumball. And first of all, I really loved and the Amazing World of Gumball, but just the season one because the rest is bullshit to me. Really? What, 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 wait, wait, no, wait, no, 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 we're not skipping that. Like, what, 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 was, what is it about the rest of the seasons that didn't appeal to you? Look, the Amazing World season one, just like Clarence, speaks to me as kids being brats going on adventures. To me, it's fun. Okay. It is uh, mesmerizing. And I want, wanted to, make, to do the same. I wanted to have my own characters do all of this. And Gumball, season, then season two, and so on and so on, uh, those characters lost the, the shine in their eyes and went from being, uh, well, uh, ignorant, and just being uh, being dumb and being kids, to being forceful and annoying, mm. and me sitting there and seeing the. I also really love the author of the season one compared to the season two that that changed kind of, and just sitting there looking at them and just like, man, will you just shut up? Turn that shit off. Mm, I mean, I feel that. Gumball is, is good. It's a good show, but um, personally, I just prefer the season one over the rest. Okay. Okay, glad you, glad you cleared that up. What uh, what other uh, the, what other things that inspired you? Uh, well, when it comes to my art style, mm-hmm. lady, uh, the, the GTA artwork. I love the GTA artwork. Mm-hmm. I wish they would make a game with that uh, type of uh, art. Which like uh, which which era of GTA? Well, any, but mostly the GTA Chinatown artwork. Oh, the really? line art being being thick and all, or thick and smooth and so on and so on how it's drawn and everything it's just beautiful to me and i really like it is this that, one is uh, this one speaks to, uh, to me the most is that your f- favorite uh, gta in the series overall no uh favorite gta well I'm, i suck at favorite things but favorite gta would be gta 4 gta 4 gta 4 yeah, I remember when I replayed that earlier, like uh, last year, it it really hit different. Um, the amount of things that you can do, the story that it had, and it was such. I feel like it was a, such a step up from the three trilogy. You know, I don't like. Have you played? Well, it? Have you played the three trilogy? From um, like uh, GTA Three, Vice I, City, and San Andreas. I did uh, well half, uh, almost half. Yeah. I, I, really, I really should, but GTA 4 came in an era where it came in the HD era. Mm-hmm. So with all of this focusing on graphics compared to gameplay elements, really, um, well, a lot of people hate it when it came out. But to me, um, what I really like in this is the different step that uh, Rockstar Games took with this game. Went to a more darker tone and a story that, with a character that is really, uh, that is really like, uh, can really be remembered easily. Yeah, I feel that. Why do you think people hate a lot of new things? Like when GTA 4 came out, like they... They just, the first interaction was negative, you say, but as time went on, like, they, it becomes one of the more beloved parts of the series. Well, it's two things. First off, I guess they grew out of it, and secondly, it's something common with anything we can say. Um, they're used to something, you give them something new, they hate it and say they love the old one. You give them a little bit of time, then they start to like it. Or if something new come again, they like the old one that you gave them. With the GTA San Andreas, jumping to GTA 4, to many it was a step down because it had a lot of things missing like, well, for example, uh, barbershops, 
uh, I think, well, so many things that you could do. Oh, yeah, also like the jet packs? James, <laughs> James and all, or even airplanes. Uh, Isn't that in GP4? I, I know it wasn't that stress. Airplanes were not that stressed in GTA 4. I know there were helicopters. I think yeah. airplanes really came in at the Ballad of Gay Tony, I think. So, Is there a I think so. of Gay Tony? I, I played that game fully. I don't remember. Okay, then but you probably have a better was, memory than me. I only remember helicopters. So I think you're, you're, you're I, on something, onto something. You have, I mean, you have to see it by uh, the eyes of Rockstar when it comes to that game. The map is too small to have a fucking airplane. Mm-hmm. Secondly, um, the things in that game, for example, customizing cars with the character that you have, it's not his type to do so. You have to understand your character has a personality and isn't something that you throw him in whatever, uh, whatever you want. And that's how you see it in the story. That's a character that evolves through the game. You can tell, for example, for his, for his accent that he is slowly disappearing. Oh, really? And as a secondary character in that game, that is the city itself. Through the game, as you uh, progress through, you will discover new parts of the of the of Liberty City. And all of this, the people around you, and all, is a huge part of the game as it builds the atmosphere to show you that you're in a where you are, it just sucks. Everything, well, I don't know how to say it, but like... It's a um, very grimy, like an unfriendly environment, uh, the uh, GT4 map, yeah. Absolutely. Just to show you that, the as it was the criticism, criticism that Rockstar made with this game, the American dream is just a dream does not exist. When you get there, you see people just like you. In fact, you even fight and kill people just like you. Also, gunmen, you are gunmen yourself. And all those, all those people also are just, ma- just there to also make a, well, the American dream, but fell on that and so on and so on. Hmm. I feel that. So, what do you want to see more of in your creative field? Well, uh, I have, I currently have at the moment uh, two series in preparation and one movie. There is like all of this online cartoons, basically. Going for something fun, comedy, but also dramatic or action type. I really want to touch the action type, uh, well, part, because. I really like action stuff and all. I don't want to go something che- uh, to go with something cheesy, because I'm really I really want to be uh, precise with what I what I do. Just have a good balance. So uh, for something that I I'm kind of new to this, well, it'll be a new challenge, and I'm up for it. Mm. Are you are you using other sort of mediums or other uh, properties as inspiration for? your upcoming action uh, idea? Well, well, um, for, uh, since a few years now, I've been, uh, I've been, you know what? It is, for a while, I hated anime because I thought like, oh yeah, this is cringe, this is bad. And I was a teenager and all, and I thought, oh yeah, if I hate this, it sucks for sure. But, mm. As an artist, you need to open yourself and get out of your zone of comfort. That's how you get inspired, and that's how you meet new people. And that's what I did. And I've been watching a lot of uh, older anime, even new ones. And it inspires me a lot to see how, when scenes are made, how everything is constructed. And it pushes you to do more. And if you are a jealous type person, it's a good competition. It pushes you to do, to do even more with uh, what, you're, what you're currently doing. Mm-hmm. So, do stuff more animated, try new camera angles, go so, for something, well, try something you never did before and experience with it. Mm. What brought you out of that distaste for anime? Well, uh, thanks to the internet, I fell through uh, 
people sharing like bits of small animation and all. And as an animator, I absolutely loved it. So I've been looking through more and at one point just started to watch them. Oh, that's good. What I meant was, what do you want to see more in the in your creative field as in what are other people not doing that you want to fill in creatively? Well, see, the thing is, uh, when it comes to that, everyone's, saying, everyone's trying to be different, yet do the same thing, kind of. So it's kind of hard to, well, difference yourself from the others. It's an easy word that everyone has in their mouth, but cannot uh, put it on paper. So what, what I don't see, however, is good fight animation and all. I see a lot of people that are just like kind of doing things there and there. If there's something special, well, it'll be limited and all. But to me, thanks to uh, the, my inspiration for all the uh, old anime and all, which is super fucking animated, I want my cartoons to be more animated and I want them to be uh, more uh, type, type of like, well, look better. Try different angles and all, practice anima, anima, anatomy and, ex, and, and so on and so on. Um, if that answer your question, or my, maybe I lost myself in. That's fine. Um, like, what do you think would be your goal in terms of like animating? Is there like an end? Is there like an end goal of like uh, somewhere that you're trying to reach, or, or is it all just fun until until you can't pick up a pen anymore? Uh, it's kind of both. When I, like I said earlier, I have two series plus one movie in preparation, which is like, well, doing the best I can and learn more and more through it. As an artist, you always learn new, something new. You will never have, uh, have learned enough. And to me, I guess it's until I can pick my, uh, a pen anymore. Because it's something I love the most. I've been making this for 10 years. With nothing in return, i seen everything, and I'm pretty sure I'm, I will see even more. The, the art community, the art and animation community is very, very vast. It is, you will never see enough, and uh, when it comes to making cartoons, you will always learn something new. Okay. So, you. so to me, one last thing. Um, basically, I'll make cartoons until I, I die. Mm, okay, I get that. Like, what are your overall thoughts of the uh, the art and animation community like uh, that you see on the internet? Are you uh, a part of it, or do you create just by like by yourself? Like, are you just well, on, on an operate on an island? Well, I'm I'm a very solo person. I always make things on my own. But however, I do like helping other people. When it comes to collabs and all, I always give a helping hand as it's, uh, well, good for both of us. Me making something, so new content for uh, the people that, that follow me. And also, uh, it will reach out new people and for them, having someone to help them. Hmm. How do you usually find uh, people to help out with their projects? Well, social medias, and, and the, of, of course, well, uh, messenger services like, of course, back then with MSN, Skype, Discord, TeamSpeak, and so on, so on, and Newgrounds, of course, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, so on and so on. It's basically social medias. Thanks to, thanks to social medias, or not thank, well, you, um, I was able to meet uh, all the people I know today, including you. Yeah, nice. Do you think about uh, social media's effect on creating or sharing art? Do you think social media can do something more 
or do you think or do you wor- do you have any worries about social media and how it affects the art that people creates yes absolutely i do think social media can have a ne- negative impact on the uh, artist on yeah. artist tell me tell me your thoughts yeah. on that well just like with uh, as ex- as an example it can be compared to uh, uh, game journalism uh, let's mm-hmm. say a new trend came out mm-hmm. or just like when a new game came out artists who are hungry for attention and popularity will be the first to make something about it when it comes for example a uh, let's say popular audio they will use it for the cartoon and share it as much as, as possible to get attention and all which of course I'm fine by it. You can do whatever you want. Mm. But it is not a healthy, well, choice to run after an, uh, numbers. Because yeah. you will be dependent, dependent by it. You will see it as your main key of motivation. And, and if you will not be satisfied by it, it will kill you. You will say, oh, I didn't reach enough. I don't feel like doing it. And let me tell you this, if you join art or animation for popular popularity, good luck, because you're going to be disappointed really quickly. And how can this be compared to journalism, game journalism? When a game comes out, which all of this can be called the rat race, as I call it, mm-hmm. everyone rush to be the first to review it and play it out so their website will get some clicks. They will not even finish the game or half of it and say, oh yeah, uh, whatever, 7 out of 10, there you go, so fans can be happy. Please click on my website so I can generate views and get my fair share. But back on artists doing that, I think if you only live by that, well, good for you, but you're not immune to a criticism. Yeah, absolutely. I remember when I was very young, I feel like I was too young to be on the internet when it came to like showing and showcasing art or especially being on sites like Twitter trying to get as many people looking at my terrible looking drawings and uh, at that at that age because all the time you would be looking at other artists and they would get a whole bunch of attention and that would just leave you questioning like i'm drawing I, I my i think my drawings are good why aren't i getting all this attention and then you start comparing yourself to the other artists and then jealousy just kicks in and when you see an artist that you don't think is is that his technique is all there you just start seeing the flaws and more and more everything and you just turn out bitter um i don't Absolutely. think i don't think it's like an age thing I think it's more of a mentality thing, uh, but even though, but I I do though <laughs> I still don't think like any any youngin should be on the internet. That's my opinion. Like I feel like Absolutely. I feel like <laughs> uh, our generation was uh, we kind of got out safely, and I just fear for just the future generations, including uh, all these different uh, what would you say trends in memes that everybody just jumps on jumps on just for that quick piece of clout and the dangers of like getting clout too quickly you just don't know what to do with it and that causes more uh problems for anxiety you have more people looking at you and you don't even know what to do with that direction you know like what are your what are your thoughts on that i have almost kind of uh, uh the same opinions and um, it's when it comes to that, it's, uh, I've seen grown people having the mentality of a child and just uh, pounding when someone disagrees with them. I've seen people who will get angry if you criticize them, so on and so on. Every artist is different from each other. They, make, they may make the same content, but every artist has their own. But when it comes to the internet, it is. Many people will call it the Wild West, but it is something that you must be prepared first if you are, if you want to share your content publicly. You will get people that hate you for no reason. You will get people that will even steal your content. You will get people that will test your nerves and your reaction 
you really even get criticized. Mm -hmm. So now you can respond uh, respond as much as you want, but the people will too. It's up to you now how you will think and act on this open air uh, asylum. The open air asylum, yes. Uh, as a creator, how do you separate good and bad criticism? I I listen to everything, even if it's insultive. As even uh, for my age, or regardless of my age, I've always seen criticism as a way to uh, help myself. Mm -hmm. Insults and criticism are two things. Even an insultive criticism is still a criticism. Many people would disagree, but in the end, it's how you you will perceive it and take it. For me, many people can come to me and say, this fucking sucks. It should be done like this. I might look at it. I will, I will uh, disregard the insult after all. Yes, yeah, so. I mean, people can be self-conscious. <laughs> just like I reply, am. just reply to like, this sucks and uh, reply it to saying, yeah, and. <laughs> I I don't respond anymore. I don't even speak publicly anymore. I just post my shit and all. I, I mean, a lot of time, but I don't give. Uh, I don't uh, respond to those kind of comments. To me, it's just someone asking for attention, or even like trying to uh, look cool or whatever. I'm just like, okay, whatever. But yeah, when it comes to criticism. I always t uh, take it and even uh, use it. For example, for a cartoon that I made, I've seen people saying the line art is too thick at certain point. I listen to that and apply it to my next cartoon. Or even objects are kind of uh, hiding some good part of the animation. I listen, I apply it. Even if they're insultive, I listen and apply. Hmm. I understand that many people it can hurt and they're right. They're right to feel things about it. They're right to feel that way. But um, I don't think I should be the one to uh, dictate people how they should feel about things. And trust me, you're completely right to, uh, to feel, uh, well, hurt to those comments and all. But I'm saying that, well, you should try maybe to ignore them as it's up to you to t uh, to uh, disregard them or not, but your response will, will be met by uh, any other response. Mm. Where do you think a lot of the uh, bitter comments come from? Like, as, as well, I, yeah, what do you think? Where do you think? Why do you think people leave bitter comments and well, mask that uh, as critique? I've seen that mostly on YouTube, where it's just like a competition of who's the funniest and all. I get that a lot, saying like, oh my god, look at this, uh, oh, uh, blah, 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 and so on and so on. Just farming likes. It's just, well, a competition for attention. And that's why I don't read comments sometimes on uh, other people's uh, uh, stuffs, because I, I know that, oh, I'm going to find people just trying to look for attention and say whatever comes to their mind for shock value. But when it comes to myself, of course, I always read it. I always read uh, every single one of them. But yeah, it's just like, it's just people trying to uh, get your attention. It's, you should disregard it or give them up, give them uh, what they want. It's up to you. Being bitter is mostly, can come from anything besides wanting attention. So, okay. Trolling, in quotes, but it could be also true hate. They really don't like you in general, or being bitter because they don't like that you are able to do something that they can't. But it can be anything, honestly. And to me, a hate comment is a hate comment. I don't try to understand why and all. At best, if someone says they suck, I will respond, "Why so? And how can I improve?" I had a lot, I had a similar experience when it came to posting one of my comics on Reddit 
and it was a very out of I, is... uh excuse me <laughs> Oh, yeah. yeah, I had a I had a really funny experience. I posted like eight pages of my comic on Reddit, and the person said, "Ah, this sucks. The world building is terrible. The char- the art's pretty cool, but it tells me absolutely nothing about what's going on and why is everybody interacted with each other and X, Y, and Z." And I was like, "Okay, that's cool. That's cool." Uh, how would you do it? And with if you're trying to make what I'm trying to make, what would you try to do different? And I'm just making it super simple, simplified for the audience. And well, I, uh, you're saying? Well, if I can, if I can interject. Oh, go ahead. The criticism, the criticism is already there. There's no need to respond with, well, how would you do it? I think this type of response where like, well, yeah, you do better is just out of bitterness. To me, the criticism is already there as what he said is the art is cool, but we can't tell exactly what's going on with the story. So I think he's talking about story structure and maybe you should look more into that. And maybe your response should be, can you tell me more about what you didn't like with the story or story structure? And that's how you can improve. Yeah, like I was essentially asking him, like, well, what would you, if you know a thing or two about story structure, if you knew, if uh, I have a set uh, structure for this story, this is what I'm trying to go for. And if you're trying to make this thing better, what would you do differently? So I was asking for, I was telling him my direction for the story, what I wanted to do for the story, and telling and asking with within all these parameters because everything created or confined in some sort of parameters to make or some sort of direction for a story and i was asking him how would he operate differently and the story that i'm making was a somewhat of a uh, a josai and it's more of a um no shoujo shoujo josai and that's for like a demographic for uh, young girls, old, older women. And he said, well, I don't know anything about that sort of demographic, but if you want to make it a shonen, you got to do X, Y, and Z. So the, the beginning of his constructive criticism was going outside of the demographic that I already set established and telling me tropes within that demographic uh, continuing the story with the tropes of a demographic completely outside of my parameters. And I say all this to say, not all the time, uh, when people, some sometimes you would have huge critics, but they would have no idea how to make a story better once you give them the direction of where you're trying to go. That's, uh, that's mostly huge you, uh, critics, sorry. With like they they say this and that and then they make something worse. But to be fair and, and etc., I think to what I understood is they, that person that comment fell, fell into something that is not in their taste. Actually, it's like giving someone who is a fan of Animal Crossing Call of, Call of Duty and say I don't like it. It's not my taste. It's not my cup of tea. Which that's normal. You just have maybe. The wrong critics. Critics. Hmm. Yeah, you. It's interesting. It's uh, it's interesting when you when it comes to finding or I don't think people find criticism. It's more like it just comes to you. I think when you get to like when you post into the right channels or post on the right platforms, you'll have people just giving you their ideas or giving you their uh their uh, ideas of your artwork unsolicited you know yeah it's absolutely i think to uh, to come back from what i said having the wrong critic critics i think it's uh if you make something in a specific genre well don't post that specific genre in another genre and i think this is what just happened to you on on reddit and but yeah yeah yeah, like knowing knowing your audience is such an important thing to do. 
So to like when you uh, when you uh, try to post on separate separate channels. But that's that's really good. I really I really like that. So last question: How can people support your goal? Watch my cartoons. And say hi. I say hey back. I don't bite. And maybe with with a chance, subscribe. Where can people find your cartoons? What do you post your cartoons actually? Everywhere, but mostly on YouTube and Newgrounds. You can see me on YouTube mostly or mainly as youtube.com slash Quindon Q E F I N D N T. I post cartoons almost like one month or two months, every two, one two months or so, or even five months. But yeah, you can find me there. And for artwork, as I also post there on YouTube, thanks to the community tab, but mostly on Twitter, aka X, or even Instagram, Devionat, Newground, Tumblr, Shred, Blue Sky, whatever, whatever, whatever you find me, I'm everywhere, Kalanda. That's excellent, excellent. Well, this has been the Drawing Solo Podcast. My name is Mason McKinney, and I am with... Colando. Yeah. <laughs> he said it's five times. Just one more time just to make sure. Yeah. Uh, and if you want to find out how to get inspiration from anywhere, make sure you subscribe to the newsletter and I'll uh, and I'll show you how to get and I'll show you how to do so. My gift to you. Signing out.